Welcome to the Retiring Canada podcast, where our mission is to educate and empower you to make the most informed, rational, and productive financial decisions. Hosted by certified financial planner, author, and chartered investment manager, Michael Isbister, you'll go behind the scenes to uncover the tips and strategies to help you invest smarter, optimize your retirement income, and reduce the amount of tax you pay. Michael is an investment advisor with Fundamental Wealth, a trade name of Harborfront Wealth Management, an IROC dealer. And now, here's your host, Michael Isbister. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Retiring Canada podcast. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the typical Canadian investor versus the transformed Canadian investor. Specifically, I'm going to chat about the old way versus the new way, the four key tenants shrouding the typical Canadian investor, the four traits of the transformed Canadian investor, three keys to investment success all Canadians should understand, and lastly, as always, a few action items for you to consider. The investment landscape in Canada is fairly narrow-minded relative to our neighbours in the South. And the primary reason for this is simply based on how the Canadian financial system is structured around the big banks. These big banks control the majority of Canadians' retirement assets, and with that comes a deep-rooted, structured way of doing things. Now, I understand that each of the big banks have a wealth management division whom have the ability to operate outside of the branch-level way of doing things. However, I continue to come across prospective and new clients who work with wealth management divisions of these institutions who have a typical retirement portfolio that turns a blind eye to evidence-based investing. These portfolios often tilt towards in-house proprietary mutual funds and or a handful of random stocks that give the illusion that their wealth manager is really doing something. I know that this comes off harsh, and some of you will disagree with me strongly in today's episode, and that's fine. I think what's uncomfortable about my discussion today is that no one wants to believe they're doing the wrong thing, especially with their money. And chances are, some of the things I say today will challenge you on what you're currently doing. In my opinion, this is a good thing. We should be able to support the reasons why we make certain decisions, And if we can't explain why we do certain things, listening to an opposing opinion may be an opportunity for growth. So with that, let's get into today's topic, the typical investor versus the transformed investor. So, typical investor in Canada is shrouded by four key tenants. They make decisions based on prediction. They have a short time horizon. They utilize the hope strategy, and they live in perpetual anxiety. So let's go through each of these, starting with making decisions based on predictions. Let's imagine we converted all your retirement dollars into chips at a casino and sat down in front of a roulette table. Now, I want you to take those chips and make a few predictions on which is the best number to stake your retirement savings. Sounds scary, right? So maybe instead, you hire a professional predictor to help advise you on which numbers to guess. Maybe the professional is right a few times and your chips grow, but over the long run, we all know that the odds are in the house's favor. Now, equate this back to investing your retirement portfolio. Maybe you have a stock portfolio hand-selected like numbers on a roulette wheel. Or maybe you have a mutual fund that has outsourced this selection to a group of professionals who also place their bets on what direction certain investments will go. This is called active management, in other words, making predictions. When we look at the evidence, as the old saying goes about the casino, the house always wins, and so too do the markets. Over the long term, the markets are efficient meaning that over the long term, the the predictors will be weeded out and the markets will prevail. You can see this evidence for yourself. 
check out the link in the description titled Crystal Balls Don't Exist. What the data shows is that over a 10 year span, 97% of Canadian equity fund managers underperform the market. In other words, you only have a 3% chance in picking the right mutual fund manager or stock picker who will do a better job than simply passively tracking the market. So, would you rather be the person sitting at the roulette table or the owner of the casino? Number two, typical investors have a short time horizon. When you are making decisions based on a crystal ball, there will be a tendency to buy and sell investments on a short time horizon with the presumption we know which way these investments are headed. This short investment time horizon can lead to excess commissions with your stockbroker or in the case of mutual funds, an increase in turnover and tax, which is the cost that is ultimately passed along to you, the mutual fund unit holder. In the case of mutual funds, these costs are reflected by the trade expense ratio or TER and at the end of the year when you receive your tax slip. The buying and selling of investments within your, the portfolio has a cost to you through the TER. And while the additional taxation borne to you by this trading isn't necessarily a cost, it can pose an issue if large positions are carried forward and the tax burden is not managed properly by the fund manager. I witnessed this firsthand with my previous company that I worked with. They allowed an investment position to balloon a substantial deferred capital gain, which on paper sounds good. This means your money went up. However, if you happen to buy that specific mutual fund a day before they triggered this deferred capital gain, you would have been on the hook for this tax bill, just like the unit holders who benefited from this investment over the years. That's like paying a year's worth of property tax for a house you bought on December 15th. It just, it just doesn't make sense. Number three, the typical investor utilizes the HOPE strategy. Well, I hate to break it to you, but HOPE isn't a strategy a retirement investor should be counting on. Hoping you won't run out of money, hoping your investments will do good, hoping you minimize tax, hoping you can predict what stock will do well. The typical investor needs to set aside simply hoping for the best. Rather, they should adopt an evidence-based investment approach and make a solid financial plan unique to their own financial goals. And lastly, number four, the typical investor lives in perpetual anxiety. Making predictions, increased costs, and utilizing a hope for the best strategy will no doubt lead to anxiety. As a retirement investor, the last thing you want to do is add stress to your life, especially as you move into a chapter of your life that should be the most relaxing years of your life after years of hard work and saving. Removing anxiety and stress is crucial. This is where transitioning from a typical investor to a transformed investor will make all the difference in the world. So now that I've laid the four key tenets of the typical Canadian investor, let's shift gears and discuss four traits of the transformed Canadian investor. They make decisions based on a plan. They have a long-term time horizon. They utilize an evidence-based strategy, and they invite calmness and consistency into their lives. So starting with number one, they make decisions based on a plan. A thoughtfully developed plan is the foundation of the transformed investor. This plan should be tailored to your unique circumstances with a focus on investment allocation, income planning, tax planning, healthcare planning, and estate planning. These planning fundamentals ensure that when life throws you a curveball, you have an action plan for what to do. Not a knee-jerk reaction, a plan that has been carefully considered and ready to implement when the time comes. A market downturn, the passing of a spouse, a health emergency. The transformed investor has built a plan that can weather these storms. The first step of this process is to ensure that you have the proper investment allocation. 
This is the heart of your plan, and we want to be sure it's in tip-top shape. To become a transformed investor, you need to cut out the predictors and make an investment plan based in evidence. More on that shortly. Number two, the transformed investor has a long-term time horizon. The financial markets have rewarded long-term investors. People expect a positive return on the capital they supply, and historically, the equity and bond markets have provided growth of wealth that has more than offset inflation over the long term. Research shows little evidence on the consistent success with trying to outguess the market. This means breaking away from short-term stock pickers and market timers and shifting towards a long-term market-based approach. We trust the market prices and believe the public markets are efficient. And when you build a plan based on long-term truths, not short-term speculation, you can shift your energy to a more tax-efficient and sustainable approach. Number three, utilizing an evidence-based approach. The market is an effective information processing machine. Each day, the world equity markets process billions of dollars in trades between buyers and sellers, and the real-time information they bring helps to set prices. This market pricing power works against fund managers who try to outperform through stock picking or market timing. As, as evidenced earlier in the podcast, only 3% of Canadian domiciled equity funds have survived and outperformed their benchmark over the last 10 years. The evidence is clear. Number four, the transformed investor is calm and consistent. When you create a plan that considers your investment allocation, income planning, tax planning, healthcare planning, and estate planning, along with clear, actionable steps to ensure your retirement is sustainable, you clear up headspace to spend less time worrying and more time enjoying your retirement years. The first step to becoming a transformed investor is to rethink how you are investing and discover the evidence-based approach to securing your retirement for decades to come. Now, before I jump into the action items for today's episode, I want to share with you three keys to investment success that I strongly believe all Canadians should understand. Number one, markets work. Number two, costs matter. And number three, diversification is your buddy. If you are ready to become a transform investor today, please visit fundamentalwealth.ca to learn more about our investment philosophy and to start your wealth management journey today. Okay, so that'll do it for today. Here are your action items for today's episode. First off, do your own research. Today, I may have called into question your retirement portfolio, and if that's the case, now is the time to dive in and do some of your own research. To start, I encourage you to visit the website I linked in the description. As you do your digging, you will no doubt come across advocates of active investing, especially from those who have an interest in keeping you in their high-fee mutual funds. Next, becoming a transform investor goes far beyond picking a handful of low-cost exchange-traded funds or factor-based funds. You must create a holistic plan that includes proper investment allocation, retirement income planning, tax planning, healthcare planning, and estate planning. At the end of the day, an investment isn't a retirement plan, whether it be a stock portfolio, mutual fund, or exchange-traded fund. Lastly, proponents of high-fee mutual funds will boast their fund's Morningstar rating, how it protects from downside risk, and how much of a rock star their fund manager is. Now, while I agree with the merits that some funds do a good job of limiting market drawdowns in the short term, over the long term, a well-balanced plan with an evidence-based approach in conjunction with a comprehensive retirement plan will give you the highest probability of retirement success. Don't settle, take action, and enjoy the stress-free retirement you deserve. Okay, so that'll do it for today's episode. Be sure to sign up for my weekly Retiring Canada newsletter. And hey, when it comes to your retirement, don't take chances. 
make a plan so you can retire with confidence. All comments are of a general nature and should not be relied upon as individual advice. The views and opinions expressed in this commentary may not necessarily reflect those of Harborfront Wealth Management. While every attempt is made to ensure accuracy, facts and figures are not guaranteed. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing or tax advice. Please seek advice from your accountant regarding anything raised in the content of the podcast regarding your individual tax situation. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.